the format of being robot. Days turned into weeks after the discovery of the disturbing Sammy the Cat DVDs. The unsettling events and nightmares continued to haunt my thoughts. I decided to go deeper into the mystery, determined to uncover the truth behind this haunting show. I have contacted the local police department again to inquire about any updates on their investigation into the second DVD I've reported. They informed me afterward that the man responsible for the show's disturbing content had been identified as Richard Turner, an actor who had struggled with severe mental health issues. Intrigued and horrified by this disclosure, I decided to visit Richard Turner in prison. I wanted answers. As I entered the cold, dimly lit prison visiting room, I was met with a crooked and untidy man in a prison uniform. It was Richard Turner, the man who had portrayed Sammy the Cat. He looked up, his eyes filled with a mixture of sadness and madness, which the two words both rhyme. I couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for him, despite the gruesome scenes I had witnessed in his show. Richard. I began cautiously. I need to understand what happened with Sammy the Cat. Why did you create such a disturbing show? Richard hesitated, his gaze fixed on the table. It was my descent into madness. He mumbled, his voice trembling. I was plagued by my demons, and I thought creating this show would somehow help me cope. But why the violence? The nightmares it caused? I said. Tears welled up in Richard's eyes as he recounted his troubled past. I lost everything, my career, my family. I became consumed by my own darkness. I thought that by creating something so horrifying, I could share my pain with the world. It was my cry for help, albeit a twisted one. I left the prison with a heavy heart, struggling to comprehend the depths of Richard's torment. It was a chilling reminder of the power of mental illness and the damaging impact it could have on a person's life. Still, the mystery surrounding the second DVD remained. Why had it shown a seemingly different side of Richard, one that hinted at remorse and regret? Determined to find answers, I revisited my great aunt's estate, sifting through her belongings once more. Hidden among her possessions, she stumbled upon a diary that belonged to her. In it, she chronicled her experiences as a nurse at a psychiatric facility, including her interactions with a troubled patient named Richard Turner. The diary entries revealed that my great-aunt had developed a deep connection with Richard, attempting to help him overcome his mental health struggles. She believed in his potential for recovery, even though others had given up on him. As I pieced together the puzzle, it became clear that Richard had a complex history with my great-aunt. Her unwavering support and compassion had made a significant impact on his life, and he had dedicated the disturbing Sammy the Cat show to her memory. The revelation left me with mixed emotions. While the show's horrors couldn't be excused, it was a stark reminder of the profound impact one person's kindness and understanding could have on another, even in the darkest of times. I decided to preserve the story, not as a tale of terror but as a cautionary tale about the importance of mental health awareness and the potential for redemption, even in the most disturbing of circumstances. After talking to Mr. Turner and sifting through my great aunt's belongings, I realized that the police department was searching the house, and they found something unexplainable. It turns out he was living inside the walls the whole time before the police found him, and during that, they also found blood stains from the victims he killed. They already collected what he used in the show, his Sammy costume and the long-barreled shotgun. They decided to put the shotgun in a bag. They hired strong men to grab the costume and lock it away somewhere. One of his friends was Jack Kennedy. How do I know him? I was searching more about Richard, and I found his name, so I clicked it to find more information. He was one of the people who knew Richard Turner at the facility where my great aunt met Richard Turner, though the guy was less insane than he was. Jack Kennedy is a traumatized but intelligent man who suffered from child abuse. He later found the Sammy costume and saved it for family-friendly entertainment purposes, though he made it less low-budget in order to make it less creepy. Now, before I end this, I have nothing else to say to anyone who reads this. 
Richard may not return to the public, but I assure you that I hope, and I'm being serious here, that despite him being a terrible person as seen in the previous tapes I watched, he does seem like he has remorse and regret for his actions, and I'm assuming that he's being truthful about it. Anyone can change if they put in the effort. I'm glad I tried to end this on a little happier note, but I don't know yet, and luckily, I'm feeling a bit better after this situation.